Now, when it came to season one of the Ahsoka series, there were a lot of things I, at the very least, appreciated about it, or thought were kind of good, interesting ideas, or that I did like and enjoy. As someone who had been a fan of the animated show Rebels, for example, I was happy that it was this sort of unabashed sequel series to it in live action. That it embraced all or most of the characters from that series and felt like it tried to be a true continuation of that story. That it really just tried to be a good, fun Star Wars series, no more, no less. However, even when you do that, you still, as I like to talk about a lot, I know, but you still have to remember to try to also make it just good in and of itself. Something that anyone can follow along with and enjoy because it's just a well-written story with great, interesting characters. Even if you didn't know the first thing about them going in, you could still find enjoyment in it. And even if you did know them going in and you loved them ahead of time, there should still be a really well-written story there. You shouldn't be loving it simply because these are the characters you love. The cool Star Wars stuff and beloved characters are awesome and can be enjoyed, of course, but they shouldn't be used like some sort of crutch to prop up a half-assed story. Instead, all of that stuff should essentially be the cherry on top. The fact that this is already a great, well-written show that is set in the Star Wars universe and has all these characters I love in it is what the goal should be. That is what these shows should be. Great shows that kind of happen to be Star Wars but all too often they fall way, way short in that department. And if it wasn't for being Star Wars in the first place, no one would really care all that much about them. And though I don't think that season one of Ahsoka was quite that bad or anything, like I said, there were things I appreciated and enjoyed about it. There were a few episodes in the middle there that I really liked. And mind you, I really wanted to like this series in particular. I love the character of Ahsoka. And I really wanted a win for Dave Filoni in his sort of solo live-action debut. I wanted to be able to truly believe in his abilities to lead the future of Star Wars. And thus it pains me that I didn't enjoy the show more than I did. Because I can't deny I did have quite a few problems with it, mainly with the pacing, I would say. Somehow it felt both way too slow-paced and too fast-paced at the same time where we seem to be jumping from one thing to the next, and yet, like, nothing was actually happening. Like, it could have been all done at a much quicker pace, or, like, much could have been cut out, and that would have improved the series, or they could have found a way to enrich the series by enriching the characters. It just really felt like they took an idea for a movie and just stretched it into an eight-episode series, because that's what Disney wanted, they wanted eight episodes, they wanted a show that kept people subscribed to Disney+. Plus. And so, a simple idea was extended into something that it never really should have been extended into. Kind of like the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Again, that felt like it should have just been a movie, not six episodes. Either way, that now finally brings us to the Patterson cut of Ahsoka, which turns the eight-episode series into a roughly two-and-a-half-hour movie. And it does it by mainly just editing things out. Though yes, there are some changes made to some scenes here and there, as well as changes done to the score at times, both of which tend to work quite well, dramatically well in a couple places, I thought. But more or less, not to undersell the difficulty of the task here by any stretch, this is an incredible edit in terms of technical ability, but it is just hacking a lot away. In fact, a lot of the first two episodes are just gone, and the story with the map is simply streamlined and works so much better. It's now just something the bad guys have or find at the start, explained in an opening crawl, which I liked the traditional Star Wars opening crawl. But yeah, it's something they just have from the start, and the good guys are trying to get it back. Instead of being something the good guys first find, with that long, kind of clunky opening scene with Ahsoka solving the puzzle like she's Indiana Jones, and where the HK droids then almost blow her and the map that their master needs up. And then after not being able to figure it out, Ahsoka enlists the help of Sabine, and you have this whole awkward thing between them for a couple episodes, where there is this tension about something that happened in the past. Before then, Sabine has the map taken from her by Shin, who also stabs and really should have killed her. 
all of that is basically gone, including, yes, the stabbing. And the only victim of that, I would say, is the fact that it did at least set up a sort of rivalry between Shin and Sabine early on, but it is still better without it. Also, it's just a matter of Ahsoka seeming a little reluctant to go back to Sabine. Clearly, something has happened between them in this version, and clearly Sabine is also reluctant to work again with Ahsoka, but she's willing to go back for the chance to find Ezra, and that's kind of how it happens. Again, that whole drama between them from the first couple episodes is just gone, and it works better this way. Especially given what happened between them is never really fully explored in the series anyway. It was just in there for, I feel like, extra unnecessary tension early in the season. Moving on, because I'm not going to cover every little change in detail, but much of the middle episodes seem to be more or less kept intact, which I'm fine with since those were the ones I felt were the best in the series, and had by far the best pacing already. The same battles and such on the planet with the map take place, though at one point we see Shin with Sith eyes, which was kind of a cool, interesting addition. Really kind of shows that no, her and Balin are not kind of these neutral force users, as much as they're simply darksiders. And that Shin leans even more heavily in that direction, which I think is why Balin ultimately lets her go. She just wants power for the sake of power while Balin wants power for the sake of uh, a higher purpose, in his opinion at least. We also have here all the world between world stuff with Anakin, and uh, I know some people think it is just nostalgia baiting, but I do disagree with that. I mean, if there was ever a time to use the Force Ghost of Anakin Skywalker in something, well, it, it was the sequel trilogy, but if there was ever a second time it should have been done, it was in a story with Ahsoka. Even if, yeah, the whole live or die message he teaches her still doesn't make a ton of sense or isn't presented as clear as I think it could have and should have been. I know it's also trying to touch on, is she carrying on his legacy as Vader or as Anakin? Does she have that same darkness in her because she was trained for war and trained by him and look what he became? As even Thrawn tries to suggest at the very end of the show. But I just can't see Ahsoka ever falling to the dark side, and I really hope they're not trying to tease some sort of story arc where she is tempted for reasons, especially now that she is Ahsoka the White and she is pretty much the avatar of the daughter, I think. Anyway, though, Anakin's message for Ahsoka is still pretty much the same in this version. It's either live or die. Again, there's not a whole lot that can be done by mainly just editing. But there is a very, very cool change made to the end of the encounter between them, when Anakin seems to embrace Vader and is ready to kill Ahsoka, who is undecided if she wants to live or die. Instead of that fight just being on a, a light bridge in the world between worlds, it is now back in the temple on Malachor, the one in Rebels, where, yeah, the two actually do fight, and where he would have killed her if not for Ezra pulling her into the world between worlds. And I think this is such a good and brilliant change, it makes so much more sense that I really feel like, in hindsight here, Filoni and company kind of dropped the ball and this is how it really should have been. We then move on to the back half, to everything that happens in the other galaxy, to what I thought was the weakest part of the series, in large part because I wasn't a fan of how Thrawn was portrayed, because it just felt like he made some pretty boneheaded moves at times. And though I thought there really wasn't going to be any way to fix that at all, to fix Thrawn, but I'm happy to say it does sort of fix that, because some of the really dumb decisions, ones like I'm going to send out a squad of stormtroopers to get slaughtered by a Jedi for no reason, they're simply taken out. And though, all in all, Thrawn still of course wins by essentially running out the clock, but here it kind of feels more like that was the plan all along, more so than it does in the series, even though it was still basically the plan in the series too. But again, he made some dumb moves that he just didn't need to make. Also, the final battle is streamlined as well. Yes, you still have them, Ezra, Sabine, and Ahsoka, riding through the bombardment of an Imperial Star Destroyer and not taking a single scratch. I really wish there would have been some way to change that. Like having them sneak in or knowing some sort of secret path into the fortress. Something better than just running across an open plain and not getting hit by a star destroyer. 
But anyway, the ending battle was streamlined. All the stuff with the zombie stormtroopers is taken out, for better or worse. I don't know that I hated that, but I can understand the decision here. And our heroes are only confronted by Morgan Elsbeth when initially entering the fortress, and of course Ahsoka fights her, while Ezra and Sabine try to make for the departing Star Destroyer, when of course they get stopped by Death Troopers, which is where Sabine has her Force moment where she's finally able to really tap into it and pulls the lightsaber to her and takes out one of the death troopers with a headshot, basically. Gone, then, is the whole thing where she force pushes Ezra the rest of the way onto the Star Destroyer. Now he just barely makes the jump by himself, and I think that works just fine. We don't need Sabine suddenly mastering the force in five minutes. Everything from then on is pretty much the same. Save Ezra now, at the very least, has his helmet off when he lands on the New Republic ship instead of getting off the shuttle in full armor because he, I don't know, he wants to get himself killed the first thing upon getting home. The music at the very end of the series, at the end of the movie, I guess I should say, is also changed. It is now a more traditional, or it is the classic kind of Star Wars ending music, which I also liked. And yes, there are plenty of other changes along the way, some big, some small, but I'm not going to go over everything, partly because I doubt I've noticed even close to everything. I watched this in bed the other day under the influence of COVID, shall we say, so my mind was maybe not as sharp as I like to think it usually is, and partly because I highly recommend just giving it a watch yourself. I must say that I actually really enjoyed this. It wasn't perfect, it couldn't be given it had to be pieced together from something that was already imperfect, but it did solve one of my biggest issues, that being the pacing. Things feel like they move along at just the right speed here, even if the story itself isn't always still the greatest and things don't always make a ton of sense in the story. Also, it doesn't exactly solve all the character issues. Like I said, the stuff with Ahsoka and Sabine in the first couple episodes being taken out, I think, helps. But then there's other stuff that just can't be helped, because they weren't in there in the first place. Things like Ezra never asking Sabine how she found him, or insisting she tell him how she found him despite it being complicated. Her never having to tell him she handed over the map which endangered the entire galaxy just to try and save him, and how he would have reacted to that are, of course, still absent, and could have added some real tension to a show where we were pretty sure no main characters were going to die. Again, that's not the fault of this version, that's just the fault of the original. So, yeah, though it's not perfect in movie form, Ahsoka is much better in movie form. And this was a truly impressive job, especially the parts that were added or some of the changes that were made to the score at certain points. I was pretty much blown away by this, and what's kind of cool is I think I just like the show, or the story maybe I should say, I think I just like it all more after seeing this. I'm not saying it saved the series necessarily, but it does kind of make it better now. I even think I'm far more excited for season 2 than I was before. And in all reality, it's pretty much the same story either way when you think about it. It's not like things contradict all that much between the movie version here and the series. It's just that things that maybe weren't needed were taken out. And we now have a kind of less is more approach, which just really, really worked here. Again, this was an incredible job. It made a pretty mediocre series better and I certainly recommend giving it a watch, especially if you were someone maybe a little disappointed in the series, and uh, maybe you'll find this more enjoyable. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell me if you've seen the Patterson cut of Ahsoka, and if you did, what you thought of it. And yes, I know there is a Patterson cut of Kenobi, which I have not seen yet. I have it downloaded. I'll be checking it out soon, and maybe I'll do a review on that one as well. Either way, do take to the comments below, let's talk some Star Wars, and until next time, thanks for watching.